Then God said, let there be light. Nah, come on. Uh, <laughs> it's very interesting how it works. Very interesting. So I have this, this um, uh, picture of an expanding universe here. And if you look at it, you, you see the, the, the very beginning is, is where they call the Big Bang. You know, the bright area over there, that's the Big Bang. And then you see how the universe has slowly started to expand. You see how it's now rapidly expanding. Okay, you see how that's happening? So the universe is going through this great expansion. Now what's interesting about that is at the one point of this expansion, there was this time called the Dark Ages. If you see there, the expansion's happening, but if you look down on there, you see this little, uh, uh, little oozy part right there with red and blue, and that's called the Dark Age there, if you can see that, okay? And so there's this moment in, in, in theoretic physics where they look back with telescopes and they can see this moment when there was no light in the universe. And I have this article that I pulled up, and again, it's on uh, space.com, so these these are very uh, uh, secular sites, all right? Space.com, highly regarded. And, and this is by, by some pretty important people. And I'm going to read you part of that article if I can. And this is about the dark age of the universe. The dark age of the universe, an era of darkness that existed before the first stars and galaxies, mostly remain a mystery because there is little of it to see. But scientists intensely desire to shed light on them in order to learn secrets about how the universe came into being. Uh, and quote, the dark ages represents our origin when we fir the very first stars formed and created the heavy elements we are made of today. So theore theoretical astrophysicist Abraham Leob, chairman of the astronomy department at Harvard University. All right, says this, before the dark age of the universe, the cosmos was so hot that all the atoms that existed were split into positively charged nuclei uh, and negatively charged electrons. The electrically charged ions blocked all the light from traveling freely. So, okay, so there was no light. Approximately 400,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe cooled down enough for these ions to recombine into atoms, enabling the first light in the cosmos. For, so that from the Big Bang to finally shine light. However, what came next were the dark ages of the universe. There was no light as the stars were not yet born. So all the stuff happens. The Big Bang happens, okay? Explosion of creation of universe. So all the stars and planets are there but they haven't formed completely, so there's no light. They're all there. All the planets, all the stuff, it's all hot, and it's like, it's formed, it's banged, it's all there, everything's creating, but it has no form yet, and therefore has no light, says every major scientist. So there's no light, but there is, the stuff is there, but formless, without light. Hmm. I remember that from somewhere, somewhere. Hmm. So Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Bang. He said, let there be, and there was. But see, it wasn't done yet. It was in a dark age, as Harvard University said. Now the earth was formless and empty, no form yet, although it's all there. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So it was all created. God said, let there be, and the universe banged. And then there was 
no light though, but it was all formed. It just had no form yet. It wasn't all put together, but it was there, but it had no light. Just like Genesis one through two says, wow. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. So the moment on that slide, that moment of the dark age, if you see it on that picture right there at the moment of the dark age, there's this moment, right? You see it where it's dark, it's got some light and then there's dark and then light bursts forth. The Bible tells us that. And darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters and God said, let there be light and there was light. This was not the sun. The sun came later as science has proven. Later on, God says, and I created a light. Later on in Genesis, I created a light to govern the day and one to govern the night, the moon and the sun. The darkness happened and then boom, light birthed forth. So we know that it happened exactly like Genesis said. Now you're telling me that desert wandering nomads 4,000 years ago figured that out? Seriously? That's the best argument you have? That desert wandering nomads could figure out the creation model of the universe that Stephen Hawking gets his name on things for. Now, the science is real. This is not christianuniversity.com, okay? This is not creationscience.com. This is space.com, okay? And these are major, major uh, publishers, okay? The er it says this, the early universe rang with the sound of countless cosmic bells or the voice of God, whichever, you know, if you like bells, right? Uh, which filled the primordial darkness with ripples like the surface of a pond with a stone. It, it, when you speak, it creates sound waves, okay? So when you throw a rock in a pond, it creates ripples, of waves, okay? And sound does the same thing. When you speak, there are ripples of sound, all right? Just like that. And so they theorized that sound had a major role uh, to play in, in creation. So when they checked, they found out that the way our galaxy is formed and shaped is because of sound. But sound can't travel through the vacuum of space, right? That's what we think of. We think that sound uh, can't travel through the vacuum of space. So clearly that can't happen. Well, there's this science called sololuminescence, okay? And sololuminescence, it, the science, the definition of that is sound into light. So this idea of sololuminescence. The idea is that God said, let there be light. God said, let there be light. Is it true? Can you take sound and speak? Can you actually speak to something? Can you speak and create light. Is that possible? It's a process called sonoluminescence. The literal meaning of the word sonoluminescence is sound into light. It is a phenomenon that occurs when bubbles trapped in a liquid grow and then contract at incredibly high speeds when blasted with acoustic sound waves. The acceleration of the compressions that the bubble undergoes results in a release of small bursts of incredibly hot light and thus, light is created from sound. The star in a jar. A tiny spot of bright light contained in a flask of liquid. Sonoluminescence was first discovered by H. Frenzel and H. Schultz, two scientists working at the University of Cologne in the year 1934. While conducting research on marine sonar, they noticed clouds of bubbles that flashed unpredictably and quite mysteriously. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a small bubble inside a flask of liquid. For this bubble to undergo sonoluminescence, the sound level must be in the correct threshold. At a low sound level, the bubble will be trapped, and as the level rises, the bubble will begin to jitter and move sporadically. Raising it further will dramatically decrease the radius of the bubble's movement so then it appears fuzzy and the bubble will grow larger. Slight increases of the sound level will put the bubble in a small and stable state, but too large of an increase will result in the bubble dissolving instantly. For sonoluminescence to occur, the sound level must be in the threshold between these two states. Once the bubble is in the correct state, it will start expanding. When it has reached its maximum size, the bubble collapses at an acceleration theoretically predicted to be larger than that of a black hole collapse. At the bubble's minimum radius, 500,000 photons of light are emitted in a flash of light that can be seen for shorter than 50 picoseconds, or 50 millionths of a millionth of a second. During this period, the interior of the bubble is as twice as hot as the surface of the sun. Then, the bubble size rapidly fluctuates up and down until it reaches the small and stable state that it once started with. 
As these cycles occur incredibly fast under the correct circumstances, 40,000 flashes of light can be generated per second, which gives the bubble an appearance of a tiny, unblinking light and can be seen with the naked eye, despite the bubble itself being microscopic. And this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable. First it expands, then it collapses. And this collapse happens so violently that vapor molecules trapped inside the bubble slam together and heat up so much that the bubble gives off an incredible burst of heat and light several thousand times a second, giving the appearance of a star. The first time I saw sonal luminescence was in a darkened room. I was transfixed to look at this uh, spherical flask of fluid. And you'd look into the center, and in the center see a, uh, a glowing blue-purple light, uh, which could be seen with the unaided eye. looked like a star in the heavens. A star in a jar are nothing more than sound waves. They're able to create tens of thousands of degrees of a mi minor star, a small star, a small sun. A small sun from sound waves. Now their sound waves aren't very big, but if they had somebody with a big voice, you think they could do it? Now in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over what? The waters, over the liquid. And God said, let there be light, and there was. We have the water, we have the voice, and we know it makes light. Why is it such a stretch to understand these desert wandering nomads didn't make this stuff up. They didn't make this stuff up. And uh, for all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the Earth. And the Earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and divided the light from the darkness.